Uh, yeah, so I think that the, the biggest reason why we chose to do both a YouTube version and a subscription site version is that the subscription site version is going to be a much higher caliber of play. Uh, and that's no slight against the vloggers. It's just, you know, we have five people in a lineup who regularly play 50, 100 or larger. Uh, with the exception of Chris, of course, but even Chris is playing like 10, 20 pretty regularly. Um, the vloggers are gonna be able to speak more to the general populace. I think that they're gonna be able to demonstrate the product at a very zoomed out level. Uh, if you'd like to see a more sophisticated version of that, we also have a season uh, on our subscription site that has some real killers in the lineup. Opening it up from the cutoff with the ace. Um, yeah, so this hand right here, if it was suited, I would consider putting in a three bet. It would mix between three bets and calls just because we are deeper than 100 big blinds. But this hand off suit is just going to be a call all day. Um, I'm not gonna lead the sport on this texture. There are some boards I would lead, but 200 big ones deep, you have to be really, really careful about those. And this one's gonna play pretty nice as a check. Uh, having ace here, no flush back doors. Uh, one straight back door. I could definitely bet here and fold out some hands like, you know, queen, king highs, queen highs that have decent equity against my holdings, which I think I might do. There's a flush draw and some straight draws out there. I think I'm just going to play this one passively and see what comes on the turn. Evaluate what Landon does. Okay, so we still have nothing. We have ace high showdown. And if I had the ace of clubs, this being one of the worst ace highs I'll ever have here, I think I would fold ace deuce off for sure. And then ace three off is pretty close. But um, I would start bluffing, obviously having an up blocker and then having some blockers on later streets, like let's say checks back a 6-8 suited type hand, depending on how the board runs out. So in this spot with this hand, we have a check. But if we do want to bet with our range here, I would be mixing some small sizes like Jack X and then some 10X with the club type hands. And then I'd use some polarizing over bets with hands like flushes, not flushes for sure. And then I would have bluffs like the nut flush blocker and then hands that contain equity, but no showdown value. A hand like six, eight off, if I did decide to defend with a club would be a nice hand to do that with. So in this spot, we're just gonna check with ace high and we're gonna lose a lot, but we can't start putting money in this deep. I think I'm going to be happy just to take what limited showdown value I have here. S Lennon, definitely, I can definitely have some hands that beat Lennon. I'd, I'd expect Lennon to lead some of his pairs, put some of his straight draws. I honestly just think that I can check down this one and win it. So we're gonna we're not going to get too fancy and just check. Okay, on this spot, on a four flush, um, we have a pretty easy check. We have a pair, so we have showdown. Um, Johnny's hands are gonna look a lot like smaller pairs than the board, like maybe some pocket eights, some sixes, um, and then some ace high hands as well. So in this spot, if I were to going to decide to bet, I would choose mostly a small size with my range and basically just force him to call pretty wide. But this hand is too weak to place any bet because it's way too unlikely he calls with the worst hand. So in this spot, we're basically just checking to fold and depending on the sizing you choose, but he's never gonna go smaller than half pot in position. So we just have a lot of single club hands that we get here with that are just gonna be able to call his bet if he decides to make one. So this is gonna be a check fold. Uh, the question is, is if I wanna turn my ace high into a bluff here, I think that there's no really no value in it. I'm just gonna chug it back and hope to win versus a king or a queen high here. Chips. 
500. Alright, so uh, I do think I need to address the fact that Trevor is re-raising me a fair bit. I do think I need to tighten up somewhat, but I'm not going to go too tight here. Uh, Jackton offset is still very easy open when you cut off here. I still think my sizing considerations are the same. Unless he starts going really crazy, uh, I'm not going to start raising that bigger. So I'm going to keep it at 30. Um, in the unfortunate position that I've had a lot of pretty good hands to play, so I have a pretty aggressive image and I'm just going to be seen as aggressive player as it is anyway, so I, I might normally 3-bet this hand to mix it up a bit on the button, um, but I'm going to fold in this spot. You know, since COVID hit, I've been doing a fair bit of just online play. I literally haven't played live in a year. This is going to be my first live session in a year. Don't tell anybody, but I'm going to be touching poker chips for the first time in 12 months. And I uh, definitely think it's going to be a little weird, but I've been playing a lot of online tournaments, been starting to branch out into uh, PLO cash games. So yeah, diving into live no limit holding deep stack cash, like what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Same pretty much thing as the previous hand. This hand is uh, still going to be a pretty easy open from any position at this table and still sticking with my same size. 30. Okay. Um, this is a 3 bet. And I think the worst pair that I would call in this spot that would mix would probably be pocket sixes. Fives I would probably mostly call and then sixes I would three bet sometimes and then call four bet. And that's just because sixes don't block ace five suited four bets from him and that's kind of important when his four betting range is going to be pretty tight. So sizing wise because we're 200 big ones deep I'm going to go a little bit bigger than I normally would. So if he made a 30 I'm going to go on 10. On 10. So, uh, we haven't seen Landon go too crazy with three betting, so it's not, I don't think he's like super out of line, but our hand functions pretty well uh, as a call once again. I think it's pretty similar to the ace eight uh, in the blinds, just a pip higher, slightly tighter range is involved, um, but not gonna be folding just yet. And uh, our hand has a lot of potential several different ways, so we're gonna call. So I do think it's interesting to consider having the leading range on boards like this, but my hand doesn't really function well as one of them, so I'm going to be checking and um, most likely just check folding. Okay, um, this is a really good board for us. He is going to have, will probably have all of the pairs in full. So he's going to have sets, but if we check the suit of our cards with the Queen of Hearts, that's pretty nice. We have additional equity with a back to a flush draw. So in a spot like this, I want to be leveraging my overpair advantage and just my overall equity on this board because he doesn't really have straights. Like the board looks kind of scary, but he's not opening and then calling out of position with 6-8 suited or 6-3 suited, so it's not really that important. The only thing we're kind of quote-unquote concerned about is hands like sets, which with the strength of our hand is irrelevant. So in this spot, um, when we do decide to bet, we want to bet pretty big because he is going to have pairs that are worse than ours that we can get value from. And we also have draws that we want him to immediately fold and we want to maximize our fold equity. So we can go pretty big here. So if there's like 240 in the pot, I'm going to go about three quarters and just go like a 180 size and just kind of live with that. 180. 
Uh, no reason to change the plan here. You didn't use any sort of outrageous sizing and our hand just isn't really gonna be able to navigate to showdown. It can't pick up a lot of equity, so we're just gonna fold. Easy, so easy. When it rains, it pours. <laughs> Just, you know, just get a good hand versus mat. You're gonna win a lot of money. <laughs> That's what I did when I played other mat. <laughs> I'm gonna open this hand. This is Kind of a light open from this position, but uh, I think the game is mostly playing pretty tight, so we can get away with it. So I guess real quick, um, going back to the last hand, we are going to trap some over pairs with hearts, like aces with the heart would be a great check, um, check to trap, because he is going to have bluffs in that spot. Um, but in that case with queens, you want a little bit more protection than kings and aces, just because there are scarier turn cards that appear. Uh, this is just a full. Um, All right, I mean, sitting with this hand, it's like pretty marginal. And I feel like if uh, I had a feeling that Trevor was probably playing a little too wide, I just might three bet this. But uh, we're on the button, which kind of incentivizes us to do so. But the issue is I don't really have much of a plan if I do get three bet and get called or whatever. I mean, this is just really not too playable. So at the end of the day, probably going to make our lives easier if we fold. Um, but if he is going to be playing super wide, three betting makes sense. But right now we're folding. Definitely a playable hand from the big blind. Definitely also a three bet candidate, but against Trevor in this sort of game flow that's going on right now, I, I'm sensing that he wants to play some pots and I don't particularly want to blow the pot out of position with him, even though this hand does play relatively decent post flop. I'm just gonna opt for the call here. Gonna be checking my entire range on this particular board and see what Trevor does. Uh, so on this flop, I'm gonna be betting a decent amount of hands. Not uh, not 100% of my range, but a decent amount. Um, and with my hand that has two overs and a gut shot, uh, blockers to 9, 10 and queen nine um, and decent amount of equity, uh, I'm gonna be betting very small and then betting multiple streets with this hand. So I'm gonna start with that. 25. Obviously, we have a couple options here. We could definitely proceed with the call trapping. We hold the seven of diamonds in our hand, which is relevant in, in that if we turn our hand into a raise here with trips, he could definitely think uh, that our range consists of some draws here, namely 10-7 and jack-10. There's definitely some hands where we can raise and he can go into hero call mode. I think Trevor is definitely not one to give up pots. And I think there's more value in check raising here rather than trying to trap him. So we're gonna go for it right now since there are some draws that he can give us credit for. And now the question is sizing. I made it $25. I think we can go with a little bit more than pot. Maybe Forex has bet around 110 bucks. I think that sounds good. Let's raise it up. Uh, facing check raise here, have an interesting decision. I can definitely continue with my hand. The one problem with it is that having a 10 in my hand blocks a lot of the hands that would be semi bluffing with his hand. Um, we want him to have hands like 10 7 and jack 10. Uh, that would be pretty natural check raise bluff candidates. Um, but given that I do have uh, some outs obviously against some 9x hands and I can and can float this hand uh, fine. I think I would want to continue with this exact hand and fold some weaker hands um, like some king high hands that don't have. Eh, I'm trying to think where I open from here. So um, I will be calling and then going from there. Definitely not surprised that Trevor made the call here. He's his range definitely can consist of some over pairs. He can definitely have queen jack himself. 
Uh, I'm sorry, Jack 10 himself. Um, so we're definitely going to want a value bet. And if I did have a hand like 10 7 of diamonds or a hand like Jack 10 myself, I would size on the large size here. 6 7 actually gets there. We blocked that. Uh, definitely going to go for some value and make Trevor pay to be a hero. I think my hand is way ahead of the range of cards that he's going to have. So just deciding on sizing now. I made it 110 the previous street. I'm going to go with $310. Uh, versus his bet here, I have a, a hand that I have to fold. Um, having 10 of clubs in my hand is kind of interesting, but doesn't really matter that much. Uh, you know, I have a fake backdoor flush draw, basically. But, um, yeah, having the 10 in my hand is not a good hand to have. 7-6 gets there now as well, and just the fact that I block a lot of his uh, hands that would continue bluffing just makes my hand have to fold. If I had an overpair, I would probably call again on turn and then decide river, depending on what overpair I have. Um, the interesting thing that I was thinking about was what I would do versus his check. Uh, if he checks, then I would likely just start betting turn with the intention of going for it on the river. Um, but once he bets here, I have to just fold my hand. So. Uh, same hand, again, that was a loose open last hand is uh, another loose open spot. The, I like opening under the gun in this lineup, um, so I'm going to just keep opening and keep driving the action. 30. So his range opening from the low jack is going to be very, not very tight, so to speak, but it's going to be the tightest range of the table for obvious reasons. And this hand I would mix as a 3-bet sometimes if it was ace-5 wheel versus ace-6. And it's a really big difference because the ability to make a wheel is very important as well as uh, not really interfering with his opens. So this spot's just a fold and people normally tend to call with hands like this. But the problem is you can get squeezed behind and then you're just kind of effectively putting in dead money. Or people call behind you and you're not finishing the hand on the button or in, like, in position. So on the button, like you can make a case for calling this deep, but in this spot you just can't. Uh, so one thing that's very clear here is that Trevor seems to have the widest under the gun open range of anybody here. Um, so I'm gonna have to start defending more hands in the big blind given how people seem to be playing pre-flop uh, in between us. So this hand's definitely gonna fit the bill. I think it functions significantly better as a call here. Uh, we're getting a pretty good price, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, another dry flop situation. Um, this one's a little more advantageous than the last one, which was a little more connected. I'm going to be betting very high frequency again in this spot. Uh, he will have some more 9x hands than me, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So I'm just taking uh, a small bet here with 100% of my range pretty much. And my hand has some good uh, backdoor qualities to it for making straights and obviously having over cards to the 9. So expect to get called by a lot of over card type hands here and then uh, proceed from there. So, okay. 25. So on this board, uh, you know, it's super dry. There's no front door draw at all. And we have ace high along with a back door gutter to the wheel. Uh, ace high is going to be good here at a pretty high frequency. I don't see any real need to check raise. Call seems like the best option. Uh, not, not surprised to get called in the flop here. Again, going to get called by a lot of base high hands, a lot of king high hands, a lot of hands that have backdoor draws. So, um, 
with this turn being pretty innocuous, I think I can continue betting. And I would bet here for value with a lot of pairs that are looking for protection and value. Um, obviously, I have some 9x hands, like 9-8 suited, 10-9 suited, jack-9 suited for another gun, queen-9 suited, um, and ace-9 suited. Uh, that would be my really strong hands that I continue betting. And I can also continue betting over pairs as well here and just going for three streets. So I don't have to choose a really large sizing because I'm not polarizing to just 9x hands. I'm going to be betting lots of hands. So I'm going to choose a kind of middling sizing that's going to include all of those hands. 80. So this uh, runner is interesting because we have the Ace of Diamonds in hand. Um, it removes some of the barrel potential that he has, but because I think he's opening under the gun super duper wide, it doesn't do as much to his range as it would to uh, maybe somebody else's who's opening a lot tighter under the gun. Uh, it is also not lost on me that he can have 9x here. It's not like he can't. I probably still have more 9x in range, and the Ace of Diamonds here might allow me to take a better line through check raising because I can now barrel off on a diamond river and block the nuts where typically I could not. Um, the only thing that's a little tricky here is like if I do check raise, I'm not sure how wide he's calling. So I'm not sure if I'm going to barrel cards that don't improve me and aren't a diamond. But I still think that check raising is kind of cool here. Uh, it can potentially get him off of better ace highs um, and we will have an easier time probably winning the hand this way than by calling and checking most rivers because he may be able to blast us off with the worst hand if we play it that way. Uh, against 85, there's 115 in the pot before that bet. I think I'm gonna go for around 4x here. Uh, I have an easy fold here with my hand, obviously. Um, the other benefit for me betting this turn is having the Queen of Diamonds in my hand blocks him from having some uh, flop floats that turn flush rolls that can then check raise. It's hard to find what hands he's going to choose to check raise bluff here on this turn, uh, especially when I have the Queen of Diamonds in my hand. You know, I guess it'd be a hand like um, Ace three of Diamonds or Ace five of Diamonds would make a lot of sense, but obviously those have me in bad shape with my hand anyway. So it it's, doesn't really matter what my hand is. I'm just thinking through what I would do with it, with my with other hands in my spot. Um, if I had over pairs, I would be calling here and then deciding on rivers. Um, if I have nine uh, X, obviously I'm just calling. Uh, I'm not going to have a, any kind of three bet range on this spot here in these positions. So, how about with my hand? Obviously, just have an easy fold. So. Got him. <laughs> Got one. You got him. You guys are we're just we're just spectators. <laughs> we're just living in your world. <laughs> it's about damn time. It'd be hard to have uh, I guess you could have a worse hand than one. I mean I could have had the best hand, but Yeah, you had the best hand. Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out if he could A moral victory if you will. You could find a hand that was Listen, the worst. Listen, he still could win with the worst hand. That's <laughs> going to another street. Very easy open, and in this spot, we're just going to call all three bets. Okay. 30. Uh, this is a hand that I might three bet under different lineups, but uh, I do want to get involved more. I feel like I've been folding a ton, but yeah, we're folding. So easy. Guy always has it. Such a life to be Landon Tice. Got a good hand, so it's gonna be opening this one. Obviously, pretty easy open, and I've been pretty active. Gonna definitely be defending this with to three bet with a call. Um, yeah, at least just a call. Thirty. Damn it! Almost aces. All right. Well, finally a spot that we can actually three bet. Kind of like suited connectors on the button. Uh, this just I just really like three betting suited connectors. They're just a lot of fun to do. So. Um, 
We're gonna do that to 90. 90? Uh, my gut instinct from this three bet uh, from Ethan is that it's pretty light just based on timing and just kind of what I felt was going to happen. But um, my hand is okay as a four bet, but I think it's okay to call also. It's going to dominate a lot of the hands that he's three betting um, and it's going to play fine out of position where I can check all most flops. So I'm going to just start with a call and we'll go from there. I don't really want to get blown off my hand too much pre-flop um, or blow, blow the pot um, out of position pre-flop. So we're just gonna start with the call. Sure. Um, these board textures kind of suck, but should have just now there's one spade out there, which is fine. I'm probably gonna play it how I normally would with most of my stronger ace highs in range or some sort of pocket pair and just gonna bet for value. So there's 180 in the middle and we're just gonna go 65. Just, oh, actually no, 55. That's how I'd probably play some sort of pocket tens, pocket jacks or ace X high range. 55. Uh, so I expect him to bet this flop 100% uh, and for the sizing. Still kind of think he's full of it. And I block ace queen, um, block jacks, block aces. Uh, so although I don't have any backdoor uh, hard draw or anything like that, I have pretty easy continue. And um, the way this hand's playing out so far, probably going to be calling turn as well and then uh, going from there. And whether I'm going to call river or not, depending on the run out. So we'll start with the call. Him calling is really unfortunate for us. Uh, same with 10 high, there's really not a whole lot we can do, but uh, sometimes can just continue barreling and feel like I keep checking my cards. That might be some sort of a tell. I don't know why I keep looking at them, but <clears throat> probably standardly can just check this back, hopefully bank a 10 or nine, but sitting with 10 high, you're just really, really not good here. Uh, can kind of double barrel again to get, I guess fours, five, six, I don't know, any other small, it's a medium pocket pair to fold, which actually might be something I might do, but that's really the only hand I'm targeting. He does have, I guess, really all the queen X's, so then I'm kind of punting off money there. So I think we're just going to do this. We're going to play standardly and just check this back because 10 high is just not great. Uh, when he checks back turn, I think he's just giving up a lot of the time. Um, it's possible that he has me beat with a hand like Ace King. Uh, it's possible that he just rivered me with like a hand like Ace Five. Uh, I think he would probably continue betting that on turn, but I'm not sure. Uh, he also could have some hands like pocket nines or pocket tens that bet flop on uh, small. I don't think I have any reason to turn my hand into a bluff. Um, I think I'm just bluff catching here on river. Um, so I'm going to check and decide on if he bets what his sizing is and what I want to do from there and just figure out from there. Check. Uh, well, we've got absolutely no showdown and there's only one way to win it. Question whether uh, he is doing this with a hand that can fold and really as played, I feel like the only hands that I can get to fold are just ace and king highs that maybe some sort of draw, but like 10 highs got absolutely nothing. So I usually don't like checking back with no showdown, but I don't feel like, I feel like I'm just gonna be punting here if I were to make a decently sized bet. And even then that just makes no sense because I feel like my hand's capped to one pair and the only hand I can polarize my range is with pocket fives and I'm not three betting with fives. So uh, we're just gonna lose this one and I feel like we'll feel a little stupid if he shows some hand that we probably could have folded out like ace or king high but uh we'll just let him have it I guess I'm confident that I can portray what's going on in my head 
but I understand that what's going on in my head is like super basic and surface level compared to the other people I'll be playing against. I just really am not familiar with a lot of different poker terms and constructs and concepts that is a little bit more advanced. And I'm just saying a lot of basic stuff like I do in my poker vlogs, um, but they might not really make a whole lot of sense because it's all in my head, but we'll see. Who knows how this experience will go. A little bit on the loose side, but gonna be playing suited cards on the button. Uh, so pretty great situation here. Obviously I have a very aggressive image and um, Johnny's open the button here. Uh, we'll be three betting and in these spots, I'm gonna be pretty polarized with my sizing because of the choice of hand that I'm choosing. I'm gonna be three betting like really strong hands and then some of the weaker hands that might be too weak to call, but play well post slop. Um, so I'm gonna go with a really big sizing here, uh, especially being 200 big lines deep. So my sizing from uh, the big line here will be uh, a little bit bigger than it was from the small line in this same spot. 160. Definitely gonna have better hands I can defend this with. So being that it's the bottom of my range, should definitely toss this one in the muck. Once again, suited connectors are always fun to play. Under the gun, though, uh, I don't know, not great, but I mean, we're just gonna widen our range here and raise this up because they're fun to play. Definitely tempted to mess with Ethan, but uh, want a little bit more playability. So this is one of the first opportunities we've had to uh, flat a playable hand on the button. Uh, I do think it's important to note that obviously with Landon and Trevor in the blinds, we're not just gonna always get to see this for, you know, $30, but uh, this hand functions pretty well as a call. We might even also be able to play some three bet pots uh, depending on what the action looks like. So this is gonna be a call. Okay, so multi-way, this is a really nice hand. Um, it's a lot better than cards that interlock with the under the gun openers open and the buttons call. So this hand right here, like when we make two pair, the, it's mostly gonna be live and we can make some pretty disguised hands and we're also getting a very good price completing from the big blind, as well as also closing the action, which is really important. So in this spot, we're just gonna call with this hand and kind of see what happens. There's some boards that we'd want to lead, most of them being very, very low boards, but even then 200 big ones deep, you have to be very particular. So this is not one of those boards at all. So we're going to check. All right, first uh, three-way pot we're playing here and totally whiffed. I think it'd be super ambitious to, I mean, sometimes we can mix in bluffs against multiple opponents, but I really don't like doing that, uh, especially when I feel like they could, I don't know, actually, well, I feel like they should be three bidding more, but I do have the stronger hands in my range, and uh, this, I don't know, I just don't really feel like bluffing right now into this. It just seems like a bad idea, uh, since two other players can connect with this board so much more than me, and all I've got are runner, runner, diamond hopes, so right now, we're just gonna check. All right, so on the surface, this is a pretty clear check. I don't disagree with that, but I also just want to add that because this is a multi-way pot, we're also not really incentivized to go after this as much. It's sort of a pot that's protected by the equities of multiple players instead of just one. Uh, so a hand where we might, you know, feel a seabed or stab here heads up, I'm, I'm just going to be checking back. We have no back door. All we have is ace high that's often not good. Um, so we're, we're pretty much just giving up here unless, you know, we, we get some outrageous circumstances, like everybody checks us every time and 
you know, it's a clean run out. We can just sort of rep second pair or something of that nature. But for the most part, I'm, I'm in give up mode here. Okay, um, so this turn, we are going to have the most suited cards out of the three of us, just because I am completing from the big blind and I'm going to have a wider range completing closing the action. This hand would have been a fun hand to check raise flop if I did face a bet, if I did have backdoor diamonds. And the reason that's important is because I'm not gonna have that many bluffs in this spot anyway, so I have to be very peculiar on like the combos I choose. And having the equity in the backdoor flush draw as well as drawing to a pretty live two pair is extremely important. And it'd be a lot more of a nicer bluff versus the button if you bet than under the gun because under the gun is going to have kings and queens where a um, mat on the button is never going to have those hands that trap pre. So in this spot this hand is just going to check and basically not really take our showdown so to speak but rangers are there's too many rangers in the hand to be able to try to do anything to be able to get value or to effectively bluff so I'm just going to check right here. All right, well, seeing all these checks is very interesting. Definitely gives me an incentive to start bluffing at this, but the issue is that three spades on there, and I feel like I, the, 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 the hands I can call a, a bet right now would, is just, I don't know, I feel like the holdings are gonna be wider, and it allows one spade holdings to call a bet too, so I just know that this bluff that wouldn't really ever get through too often on the grand scheme of things. And if I were to commit myself to start bluffing, I'd have to do it now and I'd have to fire again on the river. And this is just at the bottom of my range right now. So we're just gonna check. All right, so um, I'm not gonna insta check just because uh, I, that looks too much like I'm moving up. And I do still wanna keep my options open on the river, but this is the kind of card that I would definitely not stab the turn on. There's just a lot of holdings in their range, like pocket pairs, you know, between jacks and fours with a spade, even without a spade, they can peel. And I uh, won't have a lot of clarity on many rivers uh, as far as like what's good to bluff and not good to bluff, especially with my exact holding that really just doesn't have any connection to this board whatsoever. So uh, I am still going to stick with the plan, still going to check back here and uh, evaluate rivers as they come. Okay, so in this spot, I think at a small percentage, I would have pocket threes. It would be very low because I'm not really that incentivized to bet on the flush turn with most combos in range. I think I'll just have to go for value though with the set of flop check through. So this would be a hand that would function nicely as a bluff in some capacity. But the only problem is under the gun and the button are both going to have queen x hands that they decide to check on the flop and the turn. So on river, if they do decide to bet, it's not going to make that much sense to me, especially when it checks through twice. But we just have one of those hands that's probably just going to have to check fold depending on the sizings they choose. So we're just going to hope to beat two ace high hands, but that's very unlikely and we just can't really do anything about it. So we're just going to check and lose. I can't imagine anyone to have too strong of a hand right now. And uh, yeah, with that said, if someone does, it'd probably be Landon since he's out of position and probably can slow play. I don't even know. I don't know what kind of king high hands, but we're just gonna bet here and bet big because uh, we don't think really too many hands can call. So we're just gonna fire this out there and see what happens. 125. So this is pretty interesting action. Um, when we get to this river card where Ethan hasn't C bet, doesn't bet turn, I think it's pretty hard for him to have a whole lot of value here. Uh, the turn brings a three flush. He's probably, even if he has like pretty big slow plays on flop, I don't really expect them to check turn, especially multi-way, they're going to be pretty vulnerable. I'm actually starting to wonder if ace high can be good here. 
He chooses an overbet size, which is also not really in line with the actions that he's taken so far to this point. Overbet here would record, uh, sort of show that he's pretty polarized, where I don't think he should be like, he'd be showing like uh, representing a king, representing a flush, a boat. I don't really think with how he's playing the hand, he has those hands pretty much ever. Uh, I guess my fear with calling is that uh, obviously there's still Landon behind us, although calling looks, you know, like we have a queen or something and probably gets him to fold a decent amount. May even get him to fold some like third pair type holdings, which is why I'm thinking calling could be a kind of cool play. My, my main fear though is that uh, Ethan might take uh, something like ace high and turn it into a bluff, even when it's actually good a decent fraction of the time. Or he might overbet with like fours through jacks to get kind of tricky and maybe get called by an underpair. But I think there's also just enough kind of like random stabs here to make call pretty reasonable if fairly out of line. And uh, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do it uh, and hope I'm right. Oh. <laughs> well, this is extremely interesting. And if there were a hand <laughs> to try to go for something pretty insane and decide to raise blocking threes full, it would be kind of cool, but it's just not its just not the right hand class. And I think that my bluffs in this spot would want to be a hand with a queen in them, blocking king queen for sneaky, like double check backhand and three blocking threes isn't that important. And the reason that is, is because if either one of these two guys had pocket threes, bets would have gone in on previous streets. So seeing a three blocker and thinking that it's like something that's really important is the wrong idea i think so i think that a queen is more likely because it's they're repping some pretty strong hands and i want to block their boats so this is just going to be a fold and uh i'm very curious to see what they have like very curious good call damn it i folded the best hand Oops. nice call <laughs> trying to get that to fold I had a three. I almost just went. 